kind of again by saying this. This is the, the June 1 is the beginning of hurricane season uh, in the United States. And the prediction this year is for a very active hurricane season because of the tropical weathers and winds that are happening off the coast of Africa. Uh, prediction from the NOAA or the National uh, Hurricane Center is for during the six months hurricane season is to have 13 to 20 named storms. That's a lot in the Atlantic Ocean area. And uh, with winds of 39 miles per hour or higher. Uh, these storms, 7 to 11, will strengthen to hurricanes with speeds of 74 miles an hour or more. Now a hurricane normally would have 74 mile an hour winds or greater to be called a hurricane. If they're less than that, they're called a tropical cyclone. Uh, there's a big distinction here between tropical uh, cyclones or tropical depressions and hurricanes. So three to six of these are forecast to become major hurricanes in category three, four, or five. That's a major hurricane that has winds of 111 miles an hour or more. Uh, these ranges are well above the seasonal averages that we've had before. Actually, we haven't had a hurricane season that looks this bad since 1949. Uh, what we want to talk about today is what you should do as a consumer before the storm. We're not talking about uh, trying to prepare for search and rescue or what would happen after the storm. That's normally something that MEMA would handle in FEMA. We get involved through the State Fire Academy and through the Chief Deputy, uh, Ricky Davis, uh, with his department in doing search and rescue when we're called upon by FEMA and MEMA. So what we're talking about today is what you should do before a hurricane happens. So here's the most important thing that you should do. Know what your insurance policy has in it. Know what's covered. That's number one. Number two, make an inventory of all the things that you have in your house. If you want a link, go to the MID website, that's the Mississippi Insurance Department's website, www.mid.ms.gov. It's easy to get to. If you need an app to do a home inventory, it's very easy to find one. The National Association of Insurance Commissioners has an app at www.insureyouonline.org. That's www.insureyouonline.org. I-N-S-U-R-E-U-O-N-L-I-N-E dot O-R-G. Some people want to know how to spell it. That's the reason we put it out. A daily video with a cell phone or an iPhone like one of these will work to show what you have in your house. Um, for personal safety, the first thing you should do is have a meeting with all the people in your family, know where all the storm shelters are in the area where you live. Uh, what's available to you, what the evacuation routes are to get out of an area that's prone to have a catastrophic event or a hurricane forecast to, forecast to hit in your area. Choose two meeting places. Uh, one should be close to your home. We used to say during a fire, get out and stay out, stop, drop, and roll. Meet near the big tree or the mailbox. So you need a place close to your home. Mailbox is a good place to say out on the front of the street to meet and one in your neighborhood at the top of the street, at the end of the street, at the end of the cul de sac, if there's a storm, so you'll know where everybody is. Make certain you have bottled water, you have a first aid kit, flashlights, a battery powered radio, non perishable food items, and those are packs that you can buy in your grocery store, blankets, clothing, prescription drugs, eyeglasses, personal hygiene items that you may need when you have to evacuate, and you need at least three days supply. Three days supply and a little cash or traveler's checks. Most people will find that ATMs do not work and there's nobody left to cash the checks, so you need a small amount of cash on hand uh, if there's a predicted hurricane in your area. And you have plenty of time to do this. You normally have 24 to 12 hours of warning that a uh, hurricane is forming in the Gulf, so you know what you need to do. Have a plan for your pets. Contact your veterinarian. Not all emergency shelters will take pets. Some will on the Gulf Coast, but some won't. So check with your veterinarian and know where you can take your pet if you have to evacuate. Turn off all of your utilities and discount, uh, disconnect your appliances. If you have LP gas, this is extremely important, cut the LP gas off. The reason for that, if you have a hurricane or a storm surge, lines break, LP gas escapes and it makes a fire damage and fire hazard for anyone living in the area, especially for the people that have to go in and do search and rescue. Uh, install storm shelters and shutters and cover your windows 
with shutters if you can afford to prior to any hurricane happening or anything that may be close to a category three. Be sure there's no loose siding on your house or your home and no damage or diseased trees near your home that can blow down and fall on the house and damage your roof. Move all your important documents, and I'm talking about your insurance policies, your birth certificates, things that you need in your home to a safe place, make copies and send them to somebody, email them to yourself so you can find them and retrieve them later on after a catastrophe. Take them with you when you evacuate and have them in a waterproof bag. Take an inventory again of your personal property, such as clothes, jewelry, furniture, computers, audio, visual equipment you may have in your house. Again, go to www.insureyouonline.org if you need an app. There's one also on the MID website. It's www.mid.ms.gov. Leave a copy of your inventory with your friends, and again, I would say email it to yourself. That's easy to do. You always have a record of it, and you can retrieve it off of another computer that's not in the area. So for instructions, again, go to the websites I've given you. And after a storm, if you get to go back into the area, cleaning up after a storm, be extremely careful. Uh, know what your policy says, contact your insurance agent. If you can't contact your insurance agent, contact the company and write your insurance policy or call the Department of Insurance here in Jackson, 1-800-562-2957. Again, that's one 800 562-2957. Make sure your home is structurally safe before you go back in. A lot of times with storm surge and high winds, roofs are not, they look safe, but they're not. You go in, you hit a two by four in your wall and the roof can fall in on you. Be certain that you can go in. If you're told to stay out of an area, get out and stay out. Don't try to say it. It's okay, I just want to check one thing. Stay out until you're told it's okay to go back in by the rescue and emergency personnel that are on site. Notify creditors of bills if, if they've been lost and blown away and you didn't take them with you. A lot of people don't take their bills with them. So if they are lost, notify your creditors and tell them you'll be unable to pay your bill for 60 days. That way it won't impact your credit. Ask your utility company if your home is destroyed to stop billing you. That includes electrical, water, sewer, or anything else you may have within the city prepare to file an insurance claim immediately as soon as you can after we have a catastrophic event. If you must make emergency repairs, do not try to make them permanent. Do enough emergency repairs to safeguard your home. That includes a leaking roof that's a blue tarp. A lot of us know what blue tarps are. Just cooperate fully with all the authorities that are in your area and be very careful if you're installing on your roof because you can fall off. A lot of people, roofs are, are slippery when they're wet and uh, you, you never know what may be blown up on top of them. You can slide off, so be extremely careful. Uh, if your home's damaged to the extent that you can't live there, ask your insurance company if you have something called additional living expense. That's ALE, that's the short words that we use uh, in the industry. Additional living expense that will cover motel stays for a period of time, take photographs again and videos of any damage that you may have. Make sure that repairs to your home uh, and future damage to your property is taken care of, such as broken windows, leaking roofs, damaged walls. Don't have permanent repairs made again until you talk to your insurance carrier. Uh, I hope I made that pretty clear. When you do have authorization to make repairs, deal with someone that's reputable. Don't go out and hire somebody that says, for well, $100, I can put you in line and get to you. You'll never see your $100 and you'll never see them again. Deal with people that live in your area that have reputable reputations that you know are bonded and can do the work and will be there after a storm's done and after your work's done. So with that, uh, I'm going to stop and say we'll be glad to take questions at this time. I yes. Think you, you ran through a, a large amount of bullet points there about problems that arise when you're not prepared. But from an insurance standpoint, what do you see just through experience that is the one or two big things that if you're not prepared, especially with your insurance or knowing your plan, that arise every single season that say a hurricane comes in, et cetera, or a tornado during this time, what's the one or two big things that just habitually you see that are big problems, but, but not being prepared? The biggest problem with not being prepared is simply this that most people don't know what's in the insurance policy and say, I didn't know I wasn't covered for a flood. 
If you live in a flood area on the Gulf Coast, you should have flood insurance. If you're in the state-run wind pool on the Gulf Coast and you're in an ALV zone, you have to have flood insurance. And what we encourage folks to do on the Gulf Coast, I'll be on the Gulf Coast again Thursday of this week telling folks that you need to buy flood insurance. Rates are going up 20% a year until they get to an actuarially sound rate over a five-year period. So you're looking at huge increases in flood insurance. There are things that you can do to mitigate some of that. We have points out. But what the main thing that people complain about is I didn't know what was in my insurance policy. So we say, read your insurance policy, talk to your agents, have numbers that you know where you can call and know who to call. Know whether or not you're covered for flood insurance. If you're not, you need to check and see if you need flood insurance. Know whether or not you're covered for wind insurance. A lot of folks will cancel it trying to save money and say, oh, I didn't know I did that. Uh, we, we are not going to have the federal government bailing us out if we have another catastrophic event. I, I think we're at a point where the feds are saying you have one bite of the apple, and after that, you're kind of on your own. And with all the catastrophic events we've had in the Midwest of the United States, uh, the coffers are kind of draining very low. For an example, we only have $1.8 billion left in the National Flood Insurance Program. Uh, we had to raise that rate from $20 billion Thirty billion in round numbers, just to cover the last flooding events that we've had, and I don't think Congress is in a mood to increase the vulnerability of the national flood insurance program. So what we are seeing is the potential of uh, some people not being able to be covered for flood insurance if they don't go ahead and back now. 